Hey everybody, welcome to a deep dive. This is right after a Sunday message. We dive deeper into that message. A great opportunity to um, talk more about the message and literally dive deeper. I mean, I guess that's exactly what it is. Um, get a lot of great pieces of content and advice and you're off the cuff. You have no idea what questions I'm gonna no ask. No idea. And uh, I watch the service and we kind of go from there. So, um, the pursuit of peace, the path of peace. This is something yeah. you talk about a lot, but this was a very different message. Yeah. I think your approach on peace, um, I really liked it. I thought it was a unique perspective on how to find peace because. Oh, I, I think positioning ourselves. Yeah. For, for, really, I'm talking about, I, I think sometimes people think the peace of God is just going to come exactly. and jump on you. Yeah. And, and so this was a different perspective. Yeah. yeah. Even, it was it, what's the guy's, the, 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 uh, the king you used? Asa. Asa. That's not a well known Bible king. True, but he's, we know he, about. he really has got some good stuff going. He was a good guy. Yeah. Did he end well? I don't remember. I'm thinking he, I'm thinking he did, or, or he may have been the one that sought God, and then he stopped seeking God. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's I, I'll check back with me. I will check back again. Next that. time. I can't yeah. remember that. Yeah. I do think it's really funny because someone was talking to me about the past of peace, and the peace is a, peace is a big thing right now. We've oh, talked yeah. about mental health. Yeah. And they were at a, a show where they were at like a exhibit with a whole bunch of exhibitors coming in to, yeah. and they had shops and all these different shops that you can go purchase things at. Right. And they said like half the shops were for crystals. And wow. like, this is like a new trend is crystals is becoming a big thing. Like healing cr certain crystals that do certain things. Oh, that's been around for a while. It's what's funny is it's resurging. Oh, it's showing back up. Again. Oh yeah. He said like almost every shop had healing crystals and they were packed with people and he's wow. walking around going, what's funny to me is everybody's like, well, I don't believe the Bible. It's a whole bunch of myths. Yeah. It's like, okay, but I'm the believe that these crystals, these rocks are going to actually influence yeah. Yeah, help my me. emotions help me with and that. my mental health. Yeah. You know, I'm like, if there's never been a okay. bigger placebo effect, I don't know what it is. Wow. Yeah. But you know, but, but again, Matt, people are, people are looking for peace. Yeah. And I, maybe they don't think that there's peace available with God. Yeah. Maybe they know too many mean-spirited Christians, uh, you know, and, and, and they're good Christians too. Yeah. So they're not yeah. all mean-spirited. No. But, you know, I, no. It, yeah. What, yeah. What, yeah. What do you think people's perspective is that Christianity doesn't have the answer? Because it's unique. It's like you would, you believe in a crystal to bring healing and health. Do you not think that? Well, but think about it. If, if you believe in a crystal, that crystal's not going to ask anything from you. Right. It, sure. Yeah, crystals ask nothing of you. Yeah, there's no, so there's no accountability. No. I don't need to do anything in my life to, no. be, to be accountable to crystals. Yeah. So it's weird. I purchase a crystal, and then now I get better. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that's really big right now in my in our generation that's come up is astrology is big again. Oh, really? Yeah. That, that was kind of a 70s and thing. Like when that, used to be a, that used to be a bar pickup line. Yeah. Hey, I'm cancer. What do you, you know? Yeah. Are you a Virgo? I mean, it's our com stars align. It's coming back in popularity wow. and people okay. and like, what was your birth moment and time and it I correlates with the stars. I'm very, I'm not conscious of my birth moment. Yeah, I'm not either. <laughs> and to me, I was conscious of your birth moment. Yes. Mine was very uh, dramatic, long, very long. Long. Uh, I was very conscious of my first birth moment. That was yeah, wild. Yeah. But it's wild to me too that people are like, I'm, you know, the the reason why I'm acting mean today is because the stars, you know, Jupiter was aligned with Saturn. And so mm. I have, but it's like, or I, I'm not peaceful because of this. I mean, this wild beliefs, but it's like, the, but the Bible, you know, it has, I don't know if it's just. Well, that one scripture I did today yeah. in Isaiah, yeah. the work of righteousness is peace. Yeah. The effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance. Right? Yeah. So I think a lot of times what, what it is, is we're missing out on understanding what righteousness really is. That mm. we're right with God. Yeah. And so that's, that's, part, of, that's part of the problem. Well, righteousness is def. I think there's a good distinguisher too, and you hit on this, was that righteousness, does, like me being right, with, I'm always right with God. Right. And that does not determine whether or not you get in heaven or not. Like once you right. say yes to Jesus, right. I'm made righteous. Right. But the acts of righteousness do bring about peace. Yeah. You yeah. hit on that. How you how you live that out. Yeah. And I think that's a great opportunity. Positionally. Yes. It's like positionally you're my son. Yes. And so you're you are my son. 
the fellowship we have, and whether you take advantage of our relationship, you could you could look at me and say, forget you, right. and walk away. You're yeah. still my son, yes, positionally. Yeah, you still have right standing with me. But from a fellowship standpoint, yeah, no, and that that is that's where our relationship gets based on. And that's I th- I think that is hard. People don't distinguish that always. It's true, like, true. It's like true. well, I gotta get right to get into heaven. No, you don't. Like yeah. once you say yes to Jesus, yeah. you're yeah. getting into you got, heaven. You got made right. Yes, you're made right. But how much you enjoy much, that relationship. Yeah, how much of heaven you get on earth. Yes, yeah, that's a good point. That, that's, it's that's, like how much heaven, yeah, because like we are still have a relationship, but we right. might not enjoy a relationship together if I'm right. doing everything against what you want me to be doing. Well, again, we're talking, we're talking positionally. Yeah. Positionally, you're my son. Yeah. From an experiential standpoint, taking advantage of that, the fact that we're in fellowship together. Yeah. I mean, if you walked in, you were disrespectful, you, you yeah. know, you, you were doing things that, we didn't allow it in our family, yeah. we wouldn't have fellowship. You'd yeah. still be my son. Yeah. That wouldn't change. Yeah. I love you talk about living at a higher standard. Mm. And that's a thing that we don't really hear a lot. Right. Uh, I think that our, our world tries to take down standards. What's your thoughts on, li- what does it mean to live at a higher standard for? Well, you know, God's standard yeah. is simply a higher standard. That's living with him in mind. Yeah. And so this is, this is, one, this is one of the challenges that people want everything but God. Yeah. And and so the idea that there's a God means I may be accountable to him. Yeah. But for those of us that begin to know him, he has a higher way of us living. Yeah. And so my my standards aren't hey what I can get away with. Yeah. My standards are what is God's standard for me, mm-hmm. which means that even behind the scenes I should be living at a higher level, not just what people say. Yeah, I like the point you made is when people walk into church, like, well, I'm not going to cuss in church. Yeah. And even people dress nicer in church. Totally. You know, people get very funky about what they wear in church. You shouldn't be wearing shorts in church, you know, which we don't have those rules. No, I, no I'm about to say, you're, you're that, not talking about our church. That's yeah. not our church. But yeah. people, well, I mean, we've had people come up very angry, like, why is that person wearing shorts in church? I'm like, well, folks. Because like, it's hot? Yeah. <laughs> have you been outside yet? Yeah. Um, but yeah, but that's some people tend to dress nicer when they come to church. Right. They tend, you know, they you want your kids looking decent when you go like, hey, comb your hair. Like, right. Like, right. hey, comb your hair. Like, we're not going to have the dirty shirt. Right. Okay. No, right. you're not going to have your play clothes and go to church. Because of what it presents. Yeah. And how I act. Oh, I'm afraid God sees me in church. Right. But right. you're talking about like how God sees us all the time. All the time. I really like the point you made too. And you emphasize that um, being king of our own lives. Yeah. And I think it's easy for people to take this moment and be like, well, I was, you know, he was king. He can do whatever he wanted. Right. And I think people, can you touch on that more about like what it means to be king of your own life? Well, you know, n- no one can make you do something yeah. uh, from, from an inverse standpoint. I mean, they may put a gun to your head and say, hey, you're going to shine my shoes, but it doesn't right. mean I have to like it. Yeah. And, and so, I can still refuse not to. I just yeah. And you can a, die. I might right, get shot. Right, and you get shot yeah. and, and die. But you're the one who has an authority over your own life. No yeah. one can get saved for you. Yeah. No one can live your life for you. Yeah. That's you. Now, people come from all kinds of backgrounds yeah. and all kinds of different settings. But you're still the one that has the ultimate say. Yeah. No one could get saved for me. I had to make Jesus my Lord. Right. No one can tell me how to speak. No one can tell me. I mean, I can see God's standard, but it's still up to me. Yeah. And so I'm accountable and responsible for my own life. Yeah. People, there's a, a lot of responsibility that comes with walking with Jesus. Yeah. And I think that's going back to the crystals thing. Yeah. People don't like that. Yeah. The idea of, of being responsible for what's in our life. And, yeah. and, you know, and of course the victim's mentality or someone that says, I'm not responsible yeah. for for what's happened. I mean, I get the biggest kick out of listening to you and your siblings talk about every time we address an issue. You're like, well, well you and you guys are like, well, you you're the one that, that did that, or you're yeah. the one that started that. And I realize as a parent, yes. I certainly have impact over yes. that. But once you reach a certain age, it's on you. Well, there are some things we definitely blame you guys yeah, for. Yeah, I know you do. It's, it's, it's like, how convenient. What it, I mean, there is a couple of things for it. When all three of us have the same tendency, yeah. I would say, you oh, know yeah. what, Mom okay. did? I mean, yeah. Mom tends to apologize all the time yeah. for how she raised us. Yeah. Um, which we're like, sometimes I'm like, Mom, just chill. I mean, right, am right, I that right, bad? Right, but right, right. There, is, there is an element that we have a choice to make of like, yeah, yes. Exactly. I mean, there's a certain point like, yes, I may have been raised this way. Right. This might have been belief systems. But that does not mean, I mean, that that is what I just stuck with that. Or I'm just, well, that's just life. 
you know, I think there's an old story, if I get this right, from Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. And um, he was interviewing a man, and he, he declined him. And one of his aides said, why, why'd, you, why'd, you, why'd you pass on this guy? He said, well, I don't like his face. And they said, Mr. President, you know, man's not responsible for his face. And uh, Lincoln said, every man 40 years, of old, 40 years of age is responsible for his face. He was talking about not just the structure of his face, right. but the demeanor, mm. his, his demeanor. Yeah. And so he's saying every man. Yeah, is, is responsible. Yeah, there's a certain point where you're responsible, but you know, mm-hmm. there's something that, and you you touch on this a little bit, but the piece there's a responsibility that comes with that. Yeah, it's not just something that we can automatically just get. Okay, it's something, but you're kind of talking like, hey, there's a path to that piece. Right. It's not just something that there's peace that comes with God. Right. But there's also a path to get us there. Kind of goes against. There's a little bit of this concept, and you and I have talked about this, and I'm very passionate about this and right. about this kind of this no fault religion concept. Right, right. That whatever happens, it's God's will. Right. So either I have peace, God wanted me to have peace, or I don't have peace. Right. God. And it's a very popular, I believe, but, misguided. But, but once again, it takes all the responsibility off. Exactly. And so, I, I, yeah. And any intentionality, because right. No matter what I do with my walk with the Lord, right. My peace is totally dependent on whether or not God decides that day to give me peace or not. That doesn't. No, that, 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 I'm yeah. sorry. That doesn't. You know the. You know the Bible talks about in First John, it's the one who said it. He said, "If our heart condemns us, yeah. God is greater than our heart and knows all things. If our heart doesn't condemn us, then we then we have a confidence with God. Mm. And so I, I think a lot of times what people don't realize is they don't have peace because their heart's condemning them. Mm. And this is kind of what I got into when I talked about putting away some things exactly that are hurting you yes they're not helping you and i agree you talked about like and i i thought those great points like you have to put some things away that are are a block to peace in your life are detrimental right and i think you gave some great examples everybody automatically always goes to what is outward like right oh you drinking and drugs and all that kind of stuff yeah but there's some other things i heard a minister though um who we both love um but he said something that stuck out to me he says God's, he believes this, that God's quicker to judge the inside stuff, yeah, quicker right. than the outside stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of times people who have this outward appearance of righteousness, right. but on the inside, they haven't let go of anger. They haven't right. let go yeah. of unforgiveness. Right, right. They have gossip. They're judgmental. Yeah. I mean, there's, I well, mean. And, and yeah. honestly, if you're angry and judgmental and, and slandering yeah. and that, you're not going to have you're not going to sense the peace of God yeah. in, your, in your life because yeah. that's hurting you. Yeah. And the Bible says, put it away. And that has nothing to do with God choosing to not give no, you peace not. that day. It's of like, not. If, there, if it was a choice, then we wouldn't be told to put off the old and put on the new. Yeah. I mean, if there wasn't a choice, yeah. it would be just like, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But it does. Yeah. And so a couple of times you see Paul refer to in Colossians and in Ephesians. Yeah. Where he's talking about putting off the old man. Yeah. And, that, and I didn't go into it today like I, I wanted to and be renewed in the spirit of your mind yeah so we need to lose that's what that's the my fair lady example yeah we need to lose this idea that we're just an old sinner without the ability to yeah. even put stuff off that you know yeah. i'm just an old sinner saved by grace kind of yes. like i haven't changed yep but we have yeah and so that that's where the mind renewal that's thinking differently because because there's uh, you know the scripture i don't uh, don't be conformed to this world, but be renewed, transformed, transformed, by, transformed by, by the renewing, renewing of, of your mind. mind. Romans 12, too. And sanctification of the soul, which is something that always kind of confused me. But then I think you explained it one time in one of your messages that uh, shined a light for me. And it was that my spirit is brand new in yeah. Christ Jesus. It's right. But my soul, which is my mind, will, and emotions, right. has to be renewed by God's word. Right. By has, like, so where my spirit man is alive into Christ. Right. And it's saved and glorified. Yeah, my soul, my spirit, will, emotions, my body is not. Yeah, you got to do something with those two. And I think I've I've sometimes I got confused between. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to, you know, how can I get more sanctified when I'm already? Right. But it's kind of going to that point of, I'm still your son, right? But my relationships determined about what I do about right. it, right? Right. Yeah. And so the more I put off the things that I shouldn't have and put on what right. I should be doing, the better my relationship with the Lord gets. Totally. Yeah, and the more my re- my mind, spirit, and soul gets renewed yeah, totally. by His totally. Word, totally. I, I thought it was great. I love this. Is something that um, I really think anybody can say. 
I can take something away from this. Cause I think during this summer season too, is a great time to say like, okay, what Lord do I need to take out? Yeah. And what do I need to add? Yeah. You know, that's uh, uh, Peter talked about, said, add moral excellence, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. Yeah. And so he said, if these things are yours and abound, they make you neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. He who lacks these things is short-sighted, mm. even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. And so these are things where, where we're adding mm. things, but we're, what we're adding is yeah. uh, it's, we're adding who we are, yeah. not we're trying, we're trying just, I'm, I'm trying to live right. No, this is who I am. Right. And so I'm adding these qualities into my life because this is what I'm called to do. Because th- pretty much what we're talking about too is there's, whenever God gives us a commandment and a word, there's ability in there. There's the ability to do it. Can you yeah. explain that a little bit? Well, he wouldn't, uh, well, it's just a matter of being unjust. He's not unjust. Yeah. He doesn't ask us to do something without the capacity to do it. Right. You know, you know there were different, uh, all of you uh, children, had different capacities and in terms of academics, in terms of sports. And so we and by did, sports mean none of us were good uh, at sports. Well, well, we didn't ask you to do something that we didn't feel the felt that you didn't have the capacity to do. Right. If I had really put a lot of pressure on you to be a, uh, a top flight quarterback, yeah. that wasn't going to happen. No. And so that would have been unjust and unfair if I asked you to do something that you couldn't do. Right. And so when God tells us to do something, this, this is where we just have to mix faith with it and realize, okay, he told me to do this. Mm. I can do it. Yeah. I have the capacity to do it. Yeah. And that's where we have to believe it before we see it or feel it. That's faith. It's using mm. faith besides just saying like, hey, faith for healing, great. Right. Faith, right. faith for provision, great. Yeah, we need But there's also faith for living. Living. Yeah, living and living, walking with the Lord. Like, I, I need faith to walk in love. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, I, because because we're, we're so accustomed to being um, ruled by our feelings, yeah. emotions. Yeah. And, and so, like, if I don't feel it, I don't have it. Right. As opposed to, if God says it, then this, this is the spiritual reality. Mm. And so, the challenge is, we often don't live in spiritual realities. Our mind is not there. Our feelings are not there. So most most of us live talking about our feelings, how we feel, yeah. talking about our emotions. And, and so with if, if that takes the ascendancy, it's going to be a little harder. Yeah. So what we're, what we're having to do is go, no, this is who I am. And so that's, that, that's where the mind renewal comes in. This is who I am. Would you, and I don't think you talked about this, but I think confession could play a huge part oh, in this. Yeah. If someone is saying like, man, I need to love more in my relationships. Right. I can't. Like say, you know, I, what would you have that person confess? You know, your mother one time had, um, first Corinthians 13 posted all over the house. Yeah. You know, I would, I would open a cabinet and it's first Corinthians love. That's the, the love chapter. Yeah. And she would have love is patient. Love is kind. Love, you know, love endures long and is patient. And yeah. kind. It's in the amplifier. Is not envious. Does not seek. His yeah, own. yeah. 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 She yeah. had that all over the house and, <laughs> and, uh, I asked her one time, I said, why do, you have that why, why do you have that all over the house? She said, I need it to live with you. And so she was realizing that she needed to create a consciousness that this is the love of God. The Bible said the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit yeah. who was given to us. And so she realized that she needed to create a consciousness of it. What we're talking about today, you're right, kind of broad-based this topic, right. but we have to be able to create a consciousness. But the mindset is, again, we've got to get rid of the mindset of I can't do it because right. I'm just this old creation. Right. No, we're new creations. And that, I mean, do we ever talk about created after God in righteousness and true holiness? Yeah. I mean, if you ask people, hey, were you created in holiness? And they go, no, not me. Yeah. And yeah. so th- these are spiritual realities. But this was a revelation that Paul had. This is This is hand in hand with what they call the Pauline revelation okay. of who we are in Christ. Yeah. What Jesus has done for us. Yeah. This is where a lot of growth and development in our spiritual life is, is focusing on this right here. Yeah. It's who you are in Christ. Who you are in Christ. And that we, we have the ability to do it. Right. And the whole, I'm an old sinner, son by grace. That sounds like a humble, right? Like it's a, it's, it's false humility. I mean, more or less, I don't want to, well, I'm not I, trying and to, I, and I don't know that that's why people are, yeah. I don't know. That's why people are doing a lot of times they haven't been taught any different. Totally. And so the idea that I'm, 
I'm not the old sinner. I was an old sinner. I was saved by grace, but yeah. now I'm a new creation. Yeah. Now I'm created after God. You know, now is that I, something that you confess in your own life? She said, hey, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Oh yeah, it's probably one of my <laughs> one of the one of the ones that you know you you hear it. We do it every Sunday yeah. too. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm brand new in Jesus. Yeah. I love it. One thing I do want to talk about too is you know we don't talk a whole lot about sin. And you don't harp on right. certain sins. You're not calling people out for certain sins. Why right. don't you do that? <laughs> you're gonna give you're gonna give my detractors ammunition. <laughs> um, but I think you tied into this because essentially this message was about living a life that is well, you put different. Off, you put off some. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't know, man. I, I I think a lot of times it's it's easy to get people riled up. Yeah. And so you can get them riled up about sin, but everyone's usually riled up about the sin that they don't deal with. <laughs> and so, you know, it's you know, if you're not a if you're not a you don't abuse alcohol or or drugs, you're against, you know, the people that are abused. Yeah, but l- let's talk about anger, anger and unforgiveness. And yeah. so um I I think if you get focused on that, and that's probably, you know, and quite honestly, that's probably something I need to do more is is give people a picture of what the scriptures say right. is sin yeah. because we, we focus on the externals. Yes. You know, like I said, smoking, drinking, cussing, yeah. partying, Gambling. You, know, yeah, par- you know, partying, all those things. Yeah. And yet there's walking out of love. There's uh, anger, yeah. wrath, malice, blasphemy, yeah. filthy language, you know. And so th- there's a lot of a, a lot of things, even our, you know, watching our words. This is a lot that we haven't yeah. talked about. And so it's probably something. And, and that's that's why it's one of the reasons that made this message a little different because I went there. Yeah. I, well, I thought you did such a great job because I do think, too, that people need to realize everybody's at a different place. Yeah, totally. And I think what you're talking about with capacity with me and my sister and my right. brother, like that God does not, uh, every, you know, not everybody is right. God like saying, you can't do this as this. And you talked about like Christianity is not just about what, what we don't, you can't what do. What we don't do. It's about what you can do, which right. I think right. that's something we talk about as a church. It's like. Right. And so I, I have, I have tended to focus yeah. more on that. And I've had people get angry at me. It's yeah. like, you don't preach sin. Well, you yeah. know, I don't know if you necessarily preach sin. You preach the answer. Yeah. You preach the solution. I feel like the world preaches enough sin. The solution for <laughs> sin. Well, I, I think this is where Christians have taken a bad rap. Yeah. So. And yeah. and do you think too? And I think this is something we've talked about that the Holy Spirit has a role in that, where it's not like the Holy and your heart convicts us. You know, you're talking about that earlier. Mm-hmm. Like sin is a personal thing between man and God. Mm-hmm. You know, where God's like, hey, I, He's not wanting everybody to be the exact same. Well, it can be, but then yeah. again, some of your sin is going to have an impact on your family. Yeah, absolutely. They get, they, and so it's. Yeah. It can, yeah, it can get personal, and, and it, it it certainly can be a personal issue. But yeah. no, I, I mean, I might be personal to our approach, but I'm like, hey, this is about it's about what we can do. Christianity is not a yeah, yeah. Not a, I, I not I not think if there's any place I've erred, it's over on that side. Yeah, of talking about the positive side of it as opposed. Yeah. But we need to bring these things up because if these are things in your life and in your kingdom, yeah, they they do hold you back. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great message. The Path of Peace. Check it out on Thank YouTube, you. podcast. Yeah. Thank you, Padre. Uh, check in t- for more of these videos. On uh, We're putting these out, and okay. uh, uh, yeah, we'll have more of them. And watch this along with the message. Sounds good. All See right. You. Thank you.